Any questions? So today's topic is basically about a use case. Uh, has anyone dabbled with WebSMB? Wasm, Wazi, anything as such? No one? Okay, so WebSMB is sort of a container in which you, it's like a target basically. So if you've got a uh, x86 or 32 bit ARM, it's like similar, similar to that, it's Wasm. Okay, so in today's presentation, we are going to use three different technologies. One is Rush. Uh, the other is a framework called Spin, and the third one is called Glue Edge. Okay, so basically, what is Wasm? So, like I said, it's like a target. So, it targets a particular, for example, x86 or ARM or Arch. So, it a sandbox. It runs in a sandbox environment. So, any code that is executed within it, uh, it does not have access to anything outside of the sandbox. So basically this runs in browsers these days a lot. So the main reason for that is you can run anything inside the sandbox, right? And the code still won't have access to anything outside that. So it's very it's a very good way to iterate your code and if there's any bug, it wouldn't reach anything outside <coughs> of the sandbox, right? So currently the most popular one would be JavaScript. Because JavaScript can load it directly within the browser and you can execute code. Right? There are there are a lot of limitations right now with Wasm and on the front end. Like for example, you can't run a network stack. Basically, you can't make HTTP calls. So if you want to sort of call a HTTP server or a remote API, you can't do it. It's it's isolated, right? There is no network stack. So it can only run your code and that's it. Okay, so uh, my name is Leon Nunes. I currently work as a technical support engineer at Solar.io, the product that we use. But I like to sort of learn stuff. Okay, so so Spin. Okay, so the framework that I'm talking about, right? It's uh, by Fermion, and it's like a framework for a lot of languages. So if you're using GoLang, if you're using Rush, if you're using C, it's got support for almost all the languages. So all you have to do is use their library and write your code and you can build a WASM application that runs on the backend basis. So this is WASI and this is not WASM. So WASI is something that is WebAssembly that runs on your server and not on the browser level. Why Rush? So when I, when I, like I said, right, this was a use case. So the use case was basically to build a API aggregator of sort. Right. At that time, I evaluated Golang and I evaluated Rush. And Golang, even though I knew basics of Golang, uh, I couldn't get the network stack running. It was just failing. So I switched to Rush. So I did not know anything about Rush at that time. I still don't know anything about Rush till now. Uh, so if anyone wants to learn it, it's like up to you. So yeah. So let's talk about this framework. So so Spin is a web web assembly framework. Uh, it's by Fermion and they have a lot of things that are currently they work with. So their main focus is volume, right? They they build everything on web WebAssembly. They have a CMS right now called Bathamilio and, <coughs> and that is based on their documentation. And even that is full web WebAssembly in the web. So the only good thing that I could do with Rush is access the network stack. So that was the most important thing for my use case with. And it's also 100% capable of uh, and I think, yeah, it's Wogi. So that's a WebAssembly API gateway sort of thing. And it's all it's compatible with that also. Okay, uh, so a short demo. Is, is the screen visible yeah. in the end? application, right? You need to create something called as a spin dot TOML. Okay. Okay, so this file is very verbose. Okay. 
So just focus on the part that says this, yes, okay? So basically, you cannot run any any URL within the application that you build. You have to whitelist these URLs, and if you notice a command here. So basically this is the cargo command, it's like a compiler for Rush basically. Any Rush application that you build, you have to do cargo build, cargo run, because it's a compiler, right? So this is how it builds it with a version target. So as you can see, it's a target, so it can be compiled for, usually it's compiled for different CPU architectures. In this case, that is version, and it's like a 32-bit version. So for this, uh, basically this example, I have just built a API aggregator. And it's a very simple Docker container, if you look at it, it just uh, copies the spin commands and runs the spin. So spin can be accessed over API server, <coughs> you will always get an endpoint. So you can then query the endpoint and the commands will run the backend. Is this, is this text visible? Yeah. The back. Okay, so this is Rush code. I am not going to be going into Rush code because there is literally nobody here who is using Rush. So it's like, I am just going to give a very high overview. So this is something called as a macro in Rush called... Yeah, so this is a macro, the HTTP component. I have created a simple function that will give me a result. Basically, what it will do is it will connect to this API and it will give me the response from here. So since my use case is an API aggregator, <coughs> I'm going to be aggregating all the data and then converting into a JSON uh, result basically and giving it to the output. So, this is how it will look basically. So this is running basically on my host right now. It's not in any container, not in Kubernetes, nothing. This is how you will get an endpoint. So currently it's listening to everything on the laptop's interface, like network interface. And if you see there are two routes also that are given. So these routes also have to be defined within your spin.toml file. If I run a curl command, so this is the API that runs, and currently this is using the network stack. So, as I mentioned earlier, WASI, WASM does not have access to any of the network capabilities that you will find, like you cannot connect to a remote API. So what spin does, it's a framework built over that. So the network translation is done by spin, not wasm. So wasm still doesn't have any network capabilities. It's just that you have a framework now to do that. So you can write code that compiles to wasi, wasm, and it will still have access to the network stack. Right. So the last technology that I'm going to use is more of the, you know, the end goal, the use case that we use. So. So the technology that I'm using today is called Blue Edge. <coughs> yeah. So I work at Solo.io, right? So this is one of our products, and uh, it's an open source product. So you can go today also and run it in your environment. Right. So it's basically a Envoy-based API gateway. It's got a lot of uh, features, like so. So these are some of the features that it 
comes with like it's an API gateway like for example if you have used AWS API gateway or something like that then this supports a lot of things and it's Kubernetes native so you don't have to integrate with third party services it's all inside Kubernetes and it for you can do your GitOps and all that very easily with uh, the Glue Edge platform. So these are the current features. I'm not sure if it's visible to the end. But uh, so I'll just go over a few of the features. You've got uh, a you've got transformation request transformation and response transformation. That is a very uh, well-known feature for API gateways. So, has anyone here worked with an API gateway? AWS API gateway, any API gateway? AWS, right? So, you know, right, the majority of it is just providing routes, right? So, if you have to integrate, some, for example, a web application firewall, you can't really with, uh, with the API gateway itself, right? You need to reach out to AWS WOM and integrate that with your AWS API gateway. Even though this, the, the gateway, the integration would be seamless, you still have to pay extra for the walk, right? So, in Blue Edge, basically, we have a lot of features <coughs> open source, and they all are basically API gateway features which you shouldn't be paying extra for. So, it's uh, like a very native application. Oh, so not thank you. <laughs> I, I know everyone's hungry, but like, just too much. Okay, so since I'm, I've already set up everything, okay, so this is a small architecture diagram that I just Okay, so this is how the actual architecture looks. So Blue Edge, as I said, is an API gateway, right? And you have something called as a virtual service. So anyone who has used Apache Nginx? Apache and Nginx people. So Apache people know virtual version. Right? It's a very common concept. So it's something similar to that. Only thing is this is Kubernetes. So you create something called as an upstream, right? And this upstream, the the I'd say the most best thing about it is it can be anything. It could be an API that is outside of uh, AWS, it could be a VM in your network, it can be a Kubernetes service itself. Or it can be AWS Lambda also. So it got that also feature. Like you can have a Lambda running, and nowadays Lambda supports HTTP endpoints, right? So it's similar to that. So basically, I have just loaded the Spin application instead of that. Okay, so. Kubernetes users, how many kids who loves YAML? There are a line. Nobody loves YAML, please. So, this is the well known YAML. So, it just got your usual. So, I am running the KPE cluster of Kubernetes because EKS is a bit slow for me. So I have the K3D registry already and my Docker image is side loaded into the registry. So it's a very huge Docker image at the moment. It's around 5 GB because I have not optimized it. It's been three months. So it just runs as a usual Kubernetes uh, service. And basically you now have a small microservice with built with Wally, which is near performant to assembly language, right? Okay, so here you have the spin, the spin rush demo that I have shown. Yeah, yeah, if anyone has a doubt, yes. How many people have used Kubernetes but also done a deployment? <laughs> yeah. People have done deployments, they have exposed services. Cool. So this is a service that is there. And you notice that. So simply K9 is a tool where like you can directly write a command if you can get 
Okay, so yeah, this is but but better, right? Okay, let me see. Yeah, so this is the service that runs, right? So the the most uh, I'd say exciting feature about Blue Edge is that it takes this service and will convert it into something called an upstream. Now, like I said before, right, the upstream can be anything. So in this case, it is a service. So this is an example of the virtual service that we have, right? And so like your API gateway, right? You provide a route and then you mostly do a prefix, right? Because none of the backend APIs will use the same route, right? So this is a similar thing. And if you paid attention and seen before that you have a slash outbound route in the uh, the WASI, the spin demo that I showed, right? So this is the same thing. It will be the same same thing that I showed. It's just I'm doing fancy stuff using Kubernetes. If you heard the first talk, never deploy one service within Kubernetes, right? I'm doing that. Okay, so uh, so basically, what I have done right now is since I don't have a load balancer, I have just port forwarded the gateway proxy, the API gateway, basically, and it will now we will just send a request and see how we get the response. Similarly to how we got it outside of Kubernetes. So yeah, so this is similarly to what we did outside, right? But now you have Wasm running within Kubernetes, right? So you can create a lot of services using Wasm. You have the, the performance of it. The API gateway will give you capabilities like retry, rate limitings, all these things are API. Gateway. So you will notice this line that says Envoy, right? So this is what is what we have built upon. So we have built upon Envoy server. So Envoy is a very high performing uh, L7, L4 proxy. If you heard of Nginx proxy anyone? Most of people have heard of Nginx proxy. Right? Envoy is the same thing, right? but it's a bit, it's got more of business logic features that, such as retry, rate limit, all that is present within Envoy. Okay. So yeah, that's it. This was, that's Yeah, now. Thank you. <laughs>
So, if anyone has heard of a multi-language framework, I can't remember any right now. So, Spin is a framework that supports multiple languages. So, if you write your code in JavaScript, you write your code in Java, there's no, there's no difference. It's just you're using a Spin library. If anyone has used Flask, right? Hmm. Flask is a library, right? Similarly, you're using Spin as a library. Only, only difference is Spin is supports different programming languages. So you could be writing in JavaScript and you will still be achieving the same thing. Yeah, it's a multi-language support. So you write in any language, you build to one target. Since Wasm is a target. So yeah, I can take basic search questions. Anything else? Any questions on Blue Edge? Any questions on the framework spin? Anything? This one would be better for blockchain, like Rust or Partition. This is not blockchain. No, no, but uh, Rust is also used. So I, so I don't do blockchain, so I can't give you a, a suggestion on blockchain. So if anyone is blockchain user here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>